When I was in seventh grade, I somehow convinced my parents to buy me parachute pants. And that Friday night, we were going roller skating at United Skates of America. And before we left, I put some sun in in my hair. And it turned my hair like the color of a tiger. Um, but I felt like I looked really cool because I had some sun in and some parachute pants. Sun in and some parachute pants. And uh, we met at the mall and now I'm a monster. So I got my ear pierced at Claire's. And then we got to the rink and they did the all guys skate. And they played a white snake song and I skated really fast. And I felt like I looked really cool with my sun in and some parachute pants. Sun in and some parachute pants. <laughs> and my ear was thrown robbing from the piercing and I knew I was going to get in trouble later but I didn't care because I felt alive I'm hungry I'm very hungry order me pizza can you order me pizza from Domino's and one lava cake I love you I will help you pay it back do you know what I find hilarious repulsing if you may, when people say, oh, you're weird, 99% of the time what that really means is you actually have a personality and I'm jealous, okay? So let's just let that one sit. When I was in college in the 90s, everything was so dramatic. Like you'd call your friend at 2 in the morning and say, I think I'm going to change my major. And your friend would be like, oh my god, we have to meet and talk about it right now. And then we'd go to this place called the Family Kitchen and drink coffee and smoke cigarettes all night. And I know that's disgusting, but you have to remember it was the 90s. And then you'd be like, I don't think a musical theater major is very practical, and my real passion is pottery. And your friend would be like, well, you have to follow your passions. Then we'd order a basket of seasoned fries and pay for it with our financial aid. And I didn't realize it at the time, but I'd be paying for those seasoned fries for the rest of my life. And the moral of the story, kids, is don't go to college. When I was a little kid, it was my first day of preschool, and my mom goes to drop me off for the first time, and the teacher held my hand, and she starts walking me into the school, but I've never met this woman in my entire life, and I was really overwhelmed, so I started crying, and then my mom asked the teacher, is she okay? And my teacher turned around and reassured her, she's fine, and I turned around really dramatically, and I shouted, I'm not fine. My family and I were visiting Cleveland and we went to a museum. I was sipping on a root beer and trying to go into the next room when a security guard stopped me and said, Son, you can't bring your pop in there. And I turned and looked at my dad and asked him, Why can't he go in? Once when I was in New York City, I was on a dating app called Tinder. And I was supposed to meet up with this guy at a bar. So I go to the bar and I'm sitting there and I look around and I think I see him and he walks towards me and he just looks me up and down and he says, no, and he just leaves the bar. <laughs> Whoa, 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 I see you're having a bad day, but you will have a better day soon. I'm rooting for you. For me, gym class was torture, and why do we teach kids at that age that nothing matters more than sports? And on this particular day, we were going to play basketball, and they just assumed that everyone knew the rules to basketball, but I did not, and I still don't today, and I don't fucking care, but I cared a lot back then, and to make it even more vulnerable, my team had to take off our shirts, and I was in a total panic, so I thought, my best strategy is just to lay low until someone threw me the ball and I thought, okay, it's now or never. So I threw the ball and it went perfectly into the basket, even made that swoosh sound and everything. And I thought, finally, I've arrived until everyone started laughing. And apparently I threw the ball into the incorrect basket. And I remember watching everyone laughing and it was like this mind expanding moment because I was like, this doesn't matter. Cigarettes and hot. Pockets, cigarettes, and hot pockets. I'm gonna have a plan cause it's summertime.
this plum, give me this plum for my tum plum, yeah. Onion girl, you know you're such an onion girl. So this is the story of the greatest comeback I've ever had. I was at summer camp as a kid, fourth or fifth grade. This. <laughs> <laughs> this bully is picking on me, much bigger kid, pushing me around, he's like, Aah. pretty intimidating guy, he can definitely, you know, do some damage if he decides to punch me. And he looks down at me, puts up his fist in the air, and he goes, do you want this up your ass? And I go, do you want it up my ass? And he goes, G uh, uh, and he runs away. Neither of us wanted that to happen. <laughs> It's two in the morning, yeah, I can't sleep, no, I just want some juice. <laughs> you know that thing you're worried about? Don't worry about it. I feel like the fucking paperclip from Microsoft Word, because... <coughs> oh my god, I'm dying. So, when I was in eighth grade, I had a crush on this football player named Sebastian. But... I wasn't cool, and he was, because he played football and I was just some random nerd person. And when I'd talk about him with my friends, they said I should probably come up with a code name for him, which is a good idea. So I took a look at his football jersey, and it said 51 on it. So I said, how about 51? As if that was so original. But it ended up sticking, and then all my friends knew about 51. And then many years later, Sebastian came up to me and told me, he knew about 51. And I just wanted to disappear. The end. Hey, it's me, your cup of tea. Just dropping by to give some good vibes to you. Hopefully you're having a fantastic day. I appreciate you being here. You're very special and I love you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.